Hi, I'm Dr. Zahir Alam, a fellow of the Next Einstein Forum. Talking cities, let alone studying it, can be a confusing affair for the youth. Often classified in the social sciences, sometimes holding in the geography, sometimes in the environmental sciences, sometimes in the humanities. We aren't really sure where we stand, but as we walk in uncertainty, we often clash with the STEM fields, the hard sciences that specializes in the one centimeter fields going five kilometer deep. In contrast for us, urbanists, we often seem to go five kilometer wide, but one centimeter deep. One of my mentors resumes this perfectly. Even with PhDs in the field, we are super generalist, and this is quite a humbling perspective. Our city is, in the, under, is the underlying foundation hosting a multitude of dimensions energy, water, waste, culture, economy, and so many others. And we cannot fathom to understand them all. What we learn to do, on the other hand, is to try to understand how all those dimensions connect among and across each other. We work to understand our current urban patterns to hopefully achieve better frameworks for the connection of differing fields. And what's the ultimate goal in all this? To achieve higher resiliency, sustainability, and a better quality of life for people. Shakespeare probably said it best, what is a city if not the people? However, coinciding with Shakespeare's sonnet in Coriolanus was the advent of colonization and the principles of centralization in colonies around the world. Besides the markers of pain and struggles, we note that pursuing the morphology of centralization can be problematic in today's developing world. Take African countries, for example. Our infrastructures are coming to term and local governments simply do not have the financial resources to undergo an infrastructural transformation. How then can we rethink the morphology of governance and society in the city? We need to break down our preconceived notions of centralization to better align with today's challenges and priorities. Moreover, we are facing a wicked problem as the nature of our challenges is ever changing and this complexity is increasing due to the interconnectedness of issues. From a structural design standpoint, centralization cannot address this complexity. It will fail every time. What do we do then? We need to break from our current agendas while tapping into adjacent fields. Doing this, we need to ensure that our ultimate goal is still observed. One solution for the infrastructure revamping in African cities, for example, is the use of fiscal mechanisms to allow the private sector to invest in infrastructures in the public realm while recouping on the investment, probably through tax mechanisms. The same applies for cultural regeneration, boosting educational thresholds or livability indexes. The city wins by saving money, the business sector wins by obtaining better economic gains, and ultimately, the residents gain from a better quality of life. Everybody wins at a much faster pace. The challenge is to converse with people from varying fields of education, arts and culture, economics, governance, and many others to render a cohesive vision. It is challenging, but feasible. It was, I was part of a team that designed this for Mauritius, and this is proving promising. COVID-19 is also an interesting case highlighting preconceived notions of linear thinking. In the first few weeks of the breakout, cities and countries were in crisis mode. And at one point in time, half of the global population was under lockdown. The protocols guiding these lockdowns, however, failed to factor in cross-sectoral dimensions. Only protocols designed by health experts to prevent the spread of the virus were present irrespective of its urban impacts. This, of course, is, understand is understandable. Health over economics. The result, however, led to an impromptu barricades as city dwellers switched to survival mode. Cases of theft and delinquency were on the rise. Grocery stores were running out of goods. Havoc in a time of havoc. As the economy of cities, regions, and countries suffer from such crises, perhaps one measure to help in this is, again, the use of fiscal mechanisms to allow private industries to better design urban health responses while also adhering to the long-term tenets of sustainability. This will also lead to economic sustenance. This is key. As in our unfortunate capitalist system of today, where fast consumption is thriving, we need to adopt our approach for short-term solutions with the capacity to deliver quick wins. Short-term solutions cascading to long-term goals. Politicians also like it better. After all, with our first rate of urbanization, aren't cities where most of the votes will be? So better work on cohesive urban policies as a means of economic, social, and cultural empowerment. We've often channeled incredible resources on how to solve problems caused by cities. Perhaps it's time to look at how we can use urban planning as a resource for solving other problems. Perhaps it's now time that we turn to interdisciplinarity as a means to problem solving. Thank you.